some people have said that our issues, our growth will continue to mutate if we don't take, uh, take seriously one particular issue. And that is our history. Nigeria seems to have lost the opportunity uh, to, to have something critical to build on. And that it, that's why it appears that all these little problems are still there because we have not decided uh, who we are as a people. Uh, the king of, of the United Arab Emirates, that Sheikh uh, Mohammed bin uh, Rashid Al Maktoum, in one of his books, I think it's The Vision, said, the strength of a country lies in the power of his military and their sense of history. Do you think, and let, let me take this to um, General Esek Haigwe, do you think the fact that we, we don't seem to be united when it comes to our history is playing a key role in us not being able to forge ahead? Because it seems that we keep losing it. We try to build, but we still keep losing it because there's something critical that we have not dealt with. We've made it worse by removing history from the curriculum, I don't know whether it's back now. Of uh, uh, the agenda setting that uh, we're talking of uh, how do we start a conversation is very key. Um, the, uh, the ambassador talked about uh, debt of intellectual uh, capacity and uh, he also said that uh, people are intellectually lazy. Now, agenda setting or starting a conversation is very, very clearly spelled out. Just that we refuse to really find out what it is. You have the judicial aspect, you have the legislative aspect, the executive aspect. And even the further of the estate, you the media houses. So to start a conversation is very, very easy. But the issue is... How is the reception of the conversation you are going to start coming to play? Let me tell you, I do not also think that we are so bad, like the near-death sentence that the ambassador passed, that there is nobody that can start a conversation. We can all start a conversation, but it depends on the receptive power, how they will take you know, the conversation or the agenda setting. For instance, from a personal experience, you see, we believe in ad hoc arrangement, committee system, when we can easily set up an enduring institution. Now, let me look at it and situate it from a military angle or the security angle. Now, you have this proliferation of arms and weapons. You have about two committees who are in charge of this tackling of this proliferation of arms and weapons. Now, you have the Niger Delta question. You have the amnesty program. Now, you also have another one, the border control unit. Mm. But because we do not want, you know, what they call best practices in our everyday calculation, we continue to run into a problem. Because the United Nations has made provision for a commission for disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration instead of the ad hoc arrangement of amnesty program. The United Nations also made it clearly that a committee should give room for a commission that will start the proliferation of arms and weapons menace. But we are looking at ad hoc arrangement. When I said there is no debt of intellectual capacity, in my own level, I wrote a letter. I wrote a position paper to the office of the vice president. It was acknowledged. I'm not even sure the staff with him gave him that paper. So there are so many ways you set up you know, uh, an agenda or start a conversation, but it depends on the receptive power. Be that as it may, the question that you asked, history is key, because if you don't know what happened yesterday, you will not know what will fail today, and you don't know what we'll do tomorrow. They brought history back to the curriculum. But the idea is, what is our receptive method? What drives our attitudinal change? What drives us as a nation about value system? If there is a disconnect with this, whether there was history yesterday, there is history today, we are going to get things wrong. 
What I'm saying here is that there is an attitudinal change based agenda that we must reverse it. We must look at it because we have attitude problem. It's because of this wrong attitude that things are not working well. Tomorrow you blame the civil service, tomorrow you blame the military, tomorrow you blame the media. We must change our attitude and embrace a value system output. In a summary, that's what they call sensitivity vulnerability spectrum. Because if you are not sensitive to an issue, you become vulnerable. Mm. So if we do not start to harness you know, uh, our strength, our potentials, with a clear mind of good attitude and appreciation of a viable value system, all what we are saying here, all what we said yesterday, all what we are going to say tomorrow, Coyote, <laughs> is border dash. Wow. Um, my learned friend, <laughs> um, in the midst of all of this, because it appears, I mean, he said, many people have presented ideas to yes. the leadership. Yes. And it, it seems that the leadership seems to have its own preconceived idea of where Ni Nigeria seems to go. And another issue is the fact that people have, people before they get into leadership have an idea of how Nigeria seems to run. And when they get there, they, they develop a, a different idea. Is it possible or would it, would it ever be possible to, aside from election, have the people force the hand of leadership to bring about the change that is much desired? Is there any means to, to achieve that? Yeah, um, that's why, first and foremost, um, the manifestos of every political party is anchored on um, Chapter 2 of the 1999 Constitution. Uh, that's um, talking about the fundamental objective and directive principles of state policies. And, and so it is um, presumed that every political party or every you know, person aspiring you know, to govern should have you know, ideas on social ideas, what are your objectives in terms of you know, social objective, economic objective, your political objectives, you know, and, 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 and so on and so forth. And so once your manifestos are built around these fundamental objectives, that's the essence of government. And during the elections, what were the issues? Nigerians, I expected that we, as a people, should interact with these people on the basis of these fundamentals. Here, we identify education as one of the big problems. We identify health. We identify, we say, yes, agriculture, agriculture, but agriculture without a value added, you know, will lead you to poverty. And, and so when a man who plants yam, who harvests yam and sells, makes maybe seven million from it, the man who processes yam into yam flowers to use it, you know, for capsules and all of that, and drugs, will make much more. Côte d'Ivoire makes about three point something billion from cocoa. But Switzerland that, you know, processes cocoa to cocoa to chocolate makes about, you know, 70 something billion from the same product. The same, you know, so what were, what were the issues around all of this? Okay, yes, education, the agriculture. What were the questions we were asking as a people as we were going into the education, uh, as the election? No, rather... The questions, the national questions we were asking is, oh, yes, um, you want to take us to the next level, or you want to get Nigeria working again. The hows we are missing. Even in 2015, that's why we say we keep coming back to the same issue. In 2015, the hows also we are missing. If you ask the hows, they'll tell you you are becoming too intellectual for our liking. So, no, 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 no. But, you know, we sit down here, we raise these questions, questions, we push them back, you know, to the people and expect the conversation to continue. These which, are ways of which raising... Which brings, uh, you know, to... to these are ways of I raising mean, conversations. People, you go out to, the, you know, people want to go out there, cast their votes and all of that, but you ask, uh, Sir, Ma, you're casting this vote, but do you know exactly why you're casting this vote? Do you know what the issues are? I mean, or is it just based on... You know, so, Popularity and, and then, then you ask yourself, I have had cause to ask, what are the, the directors of voters' education in most of this campaign trade? What are their duties? What are they doing, really? Because I have not seen them, you know, educating the people on the fundamental objectives 
and directive principles of these political parties. And, and so we are all lost in the euphoria of election is coming, I prefer candidate A to candidate B, but really you don't know what candidate A has to offer or what candidate B has to offer. And, and so now these are ways of generating <coughs> conversation. You know, you keep, but like uh, um, uh, the general said, this conversation, when you generate them, how do you now tell a guide where they should go? It is enough for us to generate this conversation, but when it goes out there, it is diluted with sentiment. Nobody would discuss the issues. Take the issue of federalism and the unitary system of government or state creation, for example. In the first republic, you saw, I was reading a book and um, written by, I forgot the author, I was a white um, journalist, and he said the debate at the floor of the parliament between Dr. Nandi Azikwe and the um, chief of Bafemi Awolowo, in his life, he had never seen such robust and intellectual debate that each of them had to take a day to make a presentation. Those were the days of political gladiators. But now, what you have, come and go. I've been asked to come and go. Oh, you have served enough. Now is your turn to go. And then he gets there. He's lost. He really does not understand, you know, the details of that office, what the objectives of that office, or the desires of the office. And then, those of us that should be asking questions, all we know is Tuale Baba. And so, it's about the benefits of the office and not, you know, um, the functions of those offices. And it is for us as a people, until we learn to ask those questions, until we learn to make demands on our political leaders, we'll continue to have the kind of leaders that we have, where it, all it takes to be a leader is for you to vie for an office, and then you get there, you get there by the aid of either ballot box snatching, you know, through rigging, or uh, underage voting, just get there anyway, and then you want to continually perpetrate yourself in the office, by hook or by crook. And then the rest of us sit down, we pray that someday we'll be given appointment. And then when you're given appointment, you know, you use opportunity as a platform. No system functions that way.